Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're talking about Raylib, because Raylib 4.2 was just released. Now, we'll get back to 4.2 in just a second, but first, a bit of an overview of Raylib itself. Now, I've been covering Raylib since I first discovered it in 2016. I think it was Raylib 1.5 I saw at that point, and I said this is a great framework for beginners, and I believe that still. I think, honestly, if you are looking to uh, develop games using code, specifically with C or C++, I don't think there is a better, uh, more beginner-friendly option out there. Also, Raylib is very modular in nature, so if you're looking for a library to do a thing, and I'll show you what those things are in just a second, uh, Raylib is a great choice there as well. Also, on top of that, uh, in terms of operating systems, you've got you got all the biggies on here, uh, except for basically consoles are about the only thing that are missing, and it's built on top of OpenGL. Supporting it to a console probably would just be uh, a fairly simple job as well. On top of that, uh, Raylib has language bindings for, well, pretty much every single programming language you can imagine, as you can see right here. So if you are looking for a framework for doing things like graphics, music, input, windowing, UI, etc., well, Raylib could be a good pickup regardless to what programming language you are working with because like here, we got, we got two zig binding sets, which is uh, interesting. Uh, we've got some wrappers here. So we've got some older un under supported or unsupported versions, but we've got bindings for uh, Pascal and free Pascal or Lazarus. We got bath um, bindings here for hacks, go D, uh, you name it. It's probably got a binding out there. Uh, so a nice thing about Raylib for sure uh, is it is supported on a ton of different programming languages. On top of that, as I mentioned earlier on, it is very modular in nature. So you've got a number of different single header file, uh, single file header only libraries with no other dependencies in there. So it makes working with them really simple. And this is one of those challenges when you're first working with C or C++ is trying to get the linker figured out. Well, with a single header library, you don't. You just basically include it in and you are good to go. So here you can see you've got things like GL, math, uh, audio, GUI, uh, ping handling, resource handling, and so on. Plus, there are a number of different tools out there as well. And again, since there are very few dependencies between a lot of these things, you can use it. If so, if you wanted to just use the resource library, you could use just the resource library. If you want to use just the math library, you can use just the math library. And on top of that, this is entirely open source. So there are no external dependencies at all, which is a big part of what makes this so easy to work with. Available on the majority of platforms, it is written in C, C99 version specifically. Uh, which is what makes it so portable and makes it so you have so many language binary bindings out there. On top of that, you know, we've been adding things like 3D support over time, uh, font support, math, uh, VR, uh, you name it. And there are a absolute ton of examples to show you how to go ahead and learn and use Raylip. So again, I think this is a great way to get started, especially if you've never done C or C++ before, because they have a pre-configured version of all the tool chain and IDE. Last I checked, it was Notepad++, but I don't know if they changed that. Basically, you just download it, you start writing your code, and you press a single key to run it. It makes getting started uh, with C programming so much easier. So that's kind of an overview of what Raylib's all about. Again, a number of different bindings, but now we're going to talk specifically specifically about what Raylib 4.2 brings to the table. Now, this has been in development for quite a while. I believe it was nine months uh, since the previous release there. Um, there were 200 closed issues, 550 commits, uh, 70 new contributors, which is pretty awesome. So there's 360 people contributing to this uh, library at this point in time. So it is definitely a successful project for sure. Um, so we had some cleanup. Um, so extra libraries in pre now only includes the seven Raylib modules, R core, RL, GL, shapes, textures, text, models, and uh, audio. All the extra libraries, they're not deleted, but they've moved into their own repos for uh, dependability. Um, and then we've got uh, the examples were all cleaned up. Also, there was a marking on each one to show what version of Raylib was actually written with. So you can see you know, how useful it is to you. Uh, this one's probably the newest big feature because this is a 1.0 release. This is our res. Uh, this is a resource package file format handling. So it's a way of schmucking a bunch of stuff together into a single file uh, and then loading stuff from that. It was inspired by XNA's XNB resource file format. Uh, so there's the R Res Packer tool, which is what takes all of your stuff. So think your your sound, your fonts, your images, etc., and smushes them all into one big file. Uh, again, it's been under development for eight years, so this isn't brand new. Uh, but it's not necessarily wasn't part of it before. Uh, also, by the way, the format is engine agnostic, so you can use it however you wish. Also, since everything is modular, you should be able to just pull this out if you want to use it in your own project. And it's got features in there such as data processing, compression, and encryption. So there is beyond the performance ramifications of why you want to pack a bunch of stuff together. If you pack all your stuff into a data file and encrypt it, it makes it so people can't just rip your art assets out later on. So that's one reason why you may wish to use a resource manager of this kind. And our 
Res 1.0 was just released, along with the R Res Packer, which I believe was available for quite a while. Uh, then we got R GUI 3.2. So this is an immediate mode GUI. That means uh, you basically draw a, a immediately when you're doing the commands, uh, as opposed to retained mode. Um, it's designed for, I lost my spot, uh, for tools development has updated to a new version uh, aligned with Raylib 4.2. Multiple controls have been reviewed for library consistency. If you really think about it, in such, this is a lot like uh, I am GUI, if you've ever used that in the past. Um, and we got the parser. So multiple contributors using this tool to automize, uh, automize binding creations have contributed improvements. Uh, so this is used to like parse through files such as, again, XML, JSON, Lua, and so on. Um, New file system API. So the current API was redesigned to be more comprehensive and better aligned with Raylib's naming conventions. Two new functions are provided: load directory files uh, and file path list. And then you also have a new audio stream processing API, which is cons considered experimental. So this may not make it into Raylib final in the end, uh, but it allows you to do real-time audio stream data processing. Uh, it's kind of neat. You just basically do a callback to your music, and you can pass in uh, generated audio data on the fly. Um, the R audio module is in the spotlight for future updates. Mini audio implements a new higher level API that can be useful in the future for Raylib. Um, and then a number of other changes you can check out in the change logs here, the full details of this release. As you can see, there's 1700 lines in this particular release. So I am obviously not gonna go through everything that was added in this version of Raylib. Uh, but again, uh, clean up so that the core modules are um, all that's there and then everything else is moved into its own repositories to keep development cleaner. Uh, we have the new uh, resource packing tools built in there, an update to the immediate mode GUI system for tools development using Raylib, uh, updates to the parser tool. So definitely a nice update in general. A lot of it was, you know, cleaning things up, but that's always useful, especially with uh, open source projects as you grow the number of contributors, uh, having good organization and good code to build upon uh, in a nice consistent name of convention makes it so that more people can work together. So when it was a single user or single developer project, you know, that was less important. But now that there's, uh, you know, 300 plus contributors on this project, uh, those kind of things become more and more important. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Raylib. Once again, uh, if you are looking for a library to start with C or C++, or you just want to uh, learn C++, but the idea of just writing hello world stuff gets a little boring, so you want to get you know a little bit more like drawing stuff on screen, I uh, highly recommend Raylib. Uh, it is one of the uh, nicest ways to go about things. And if you're using other programming languages, it is a good option. Now, if you're wondering what else is in the space of Raylib, well, before it, you had tools such as Allegro, SFML, SDL, um, and a number of others. And all of those are being updated as well. So there is a lot of choice in this area. But as far as which one is the easiest to work with, I think it is probably Raylib, at least as far as when you're dealing with C or C++, it's probably Raylib. So highly recommended. If you do want to check it out, the links will be down below, but it is available at raylib.com. Of course, this is also an open source project. Uh, so it's available on GitHub. Uh, everything is under the Zlib license. The Zlib license itself is quite liberal in what it allows you to do. Uh, so yeah, that's Raylib. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.